Hey everybody, welcome to part 12 in our series on transferring data from Access to Excel. In part 12 we're still discussing graphs and today we're going to talk about VBA for uh, formatting of our legend. So let's head over to our form and produce the graph that we're starting with. You see here that Excel has put a legend for us already, but we have no code for it, and it's put in the default position on the right side. I'm going to close this and head over to our code window. Now, if you don't see it, a legend at this point, all you've got to do is set the has legend property equal to true, and that will make the legend visible for you. Like I said, Excel is going to automatically put that legend for you on the right side, but there are other, are other places we can put it. The has legend position property allows us to set it equal to a, a constant that Excel provides for us. And you can see there's bottom corner, left, right, top. There's a custom item here that I've never had any luck getting, uh, getting to work, although these others I think are sufficient. We can tweak these other positions. So these positions are kind of like um, gross positions. It puts them in the right area and then you can tweak it further once you get it there. So let's take a look at the bottom really fast. It puts it right, it centers the, we use bottom, it centers it in the bottom. Now take note that, that the entries in the legend look different now. Uh, when it was on the right side and also when it's on the left, uh, Excel is going to stack your legend entries vertically. And when you put the top and the bottom, it's uh, access, or Excel is going to stack them or uh, lay them out side by side to save space. Now let's just say that you, uh, so we got it on the bottom, but you don't want it right there centered. You want it on the left side or further to the left. So there is, let's go to the code window. There are other properties here that we can work with. Um, there is a left and there is a there is a top as well. All right. So let's do the left and you give it points. Save, produce, go. You can see this moved it over to the left. Now, there's also a width and a height property. So let's change this to left. We're going to put our graph on the left side. And again, take a quick look. See, now let's, we've got our, our uh, entry stacked. You can affect uh, the width of that if you wanted to. And I don't think you want to in this case. It's on the left. But I want to show you that you can mess yourself up. Let's set the width of the legend to, you know, some obscenely large number, 200 points, and see what we get. See how we get a, uh, a legend that uh, intrudes into the space of the chart, okay, into the plot. So be careful with that, right? Um, but however, just the point to take from all this is we use the position to get it in the right area, and then you can tweak it with the left and the top. And, it may, and, and perhaps the width to get it exactly where you want it to be. <clears throat> Let me, so let's put it back at the bottom and produce it one more time. I want to show, discuss one more thing about. So inside the legend here, we have legend entries. There are a few things we can do to these legend entries, but I want to make uh, make a note about the names that are in here. Okay, so we have gross sales and gross margin. Those are coming from our column headings right now. I have not found any way uh, in VBA using the, the legend to affect the names that appear in your in your legend. Those are coming from your series, your data series. And now, right now, I'm creating data series in this. Uh, in this method with a series collection item. Okay, so that word that we're seeing on the uh, spreadsheet right there okay, is coming from series collection one dot name. Okay, right now I have it set to that column heading we just looked at. You could either change the column heading that's coming across in your data, okay, or you can put a word here and change that. So that's the only ways that, that I know of to change the, uh, the words that show there. Now there is something else we can we can do to the uh, the legend uh, entries, okay? And I want to, let's say we could want to change the font that's down there for a, one of the entries. So there is legend entries. And this is a collection of the entries in your in your legend, okay? And they are indexed. Um, in our case, we only have two, so I have legend entries one, legend entries two. But you can change the font for these, okay? Uh, font name, let's just say 
uh, something that will stand out as being different than the other. Uh, font name uh, Times New Roman will produce our chart again now. So we have uh, ghost sales looks a little bit different than the ghost margin because we have a different font. I'm going to get rid of this. It's just for just something to show. We want to have that in there. We we'll have the same font. Now, shadows. We can put some shadows on our legend if we want to. There are a couple ways to do it. You can use the, uh, the Microsoft Office shadow style. And so legend.format.shadow.style equals. And I've got a, in a collection here. I mean, there's a, a constant set of, set of constants here. Um, inner shadow and style mixed I have not had any luck with. I'm only getting luck with the shadow style outer shadow. Now in order to use these MSO constants, you're going to need a reference to the Microsoft Office for the object library. Okay, now there's a version number there, but that's going to be that's going to depend on what version of Office you have. But you'll need that at Office uh, Office library. Let's take a quick look at what that does for us. So we get we get a dark shadow to the bottom right of our legend. Now there are there is some other code we can use to put a legend. And I'm going to copy in a whole bunch of code here, and um, some of it actually doesn't do anything. All right. So we have a lot of typing here. So I'm going to use a with dot legend dot format dot shadow. You'll find on the internet a four color property and an offset. And I just want to show you very quickly that uh, um, they are not having any effect. Okay. If this four shadow, if this four color working, I've got it set to a bright red. And you will see that um, it, our shadow is not bright red, um, nor is the offset appear to be doing anything. I've got the offset set to some very large values, and they're not doing anything for us. So let me get that off of there. But something you can do is uh, modify the transparency. Okay, let's see, that transparency goes to 0.5 here, and that gives us a softer shadow. And if we put that to 0.8 or 0.9, it's an even softer shadow after that. So that brings up an interesting, interesting conversation about how many lines of code does it take to do this shadow. So if you use this line, you get a, a default shadow that is um, dark. Okay, you can do this. Let's do this and put your transparency on there. Get rid of this. And comment it out, and you'll get your soft shadow. Or you can get rid of this default shadow and instead you can do your shadow dot visible. Of course you have to set equal true or false, right? So those two are, are equivalent. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna leave it like this for now. All right, colors. We can set the interior color of our legend. I don't know that you really necessarily want to, but you can. And there's a couple ways we do this. There's color and there's color index. Um, the theme colors is a huge topic that we're not going to cover anywhere near in this video. Color index is an interesting thing. You give it a number. I'm going to give it a number six here just to just to see. I believe it's a bright yellow. Yeah, bright yellow. So where are these these indexes coming from? This is fun. Let's take a quick look at something on here. So here's a four color property. I'm going to click on here. So the color index comes from our color grid, not the theme grid, but the standard color grid. However, they don't go in order like you think they might. So you can, uh, in order to find out what color goes with what number, you could make yourself a loop you know, and, and run through numbers and assign a different color to different cells in your spreadsheet to take a look at what number equates to what color. And what you'll find is that it's boggling is what you'll find. Um, you know, this is not one, this is not two, and that's not three. Uh, you'll find that the, you know, there's some 50s up here, and you can see this bright yellow is number six. How that's a six, I don't know. I'm sure there's a, a very uh, 
very smart explanation from someone at Microsoft for that. Um, it's just, uh, I just don't know what the explanation is. But I find that interesting. So to me, color index is not terribly useful. Um, I should just happen to know, happen to know the color number that you want. Or you can set the color equal to an RGB value. And so using the color instead of color index. Let's do this say light blue, I believe. Yep. That's not too bad. I'm gonna get rid of that though. You can also give yourself a border. Window. Get rid of this. And get rid of this color. You can give yourself a border. And I give it a line style. Okay. I'm gonna give it Excel continuous. I hope I spelled that right. Yep. You can get a default black when you do that. You can change the color of that. So there's also a legend.border.color. I'm going to set it equal to an RGB value. Let's give it a, a like a gray, light gray, kind of match our light gray uh, shadow there. So there you go. So there's other things you can do with the with the with the legend. You just have to look at IntelliSense and then and go through the object browser. But that is all I'm going to cover in this video. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. And as usual, I'll put a link to the code in the description down below. Thank you very much.